Honda's BRV is their little seven-seater in their range in South Africa. It was updated and a new version brought out about one and a half years ago. We did test the old version in manual about three years ago. But what they did was instead of the MPV seven-seater longer body little jobby that the previous one was, this one they made a little bit more SUV-like. And you can see it in a lot of the body features. Now, there is a range of three spec levels, trend, comfort, and elegance. This is the elegance. So it does have a few features, obviously, to add to give you that title. You can see the front end, very familiar Honda face, and you've got, of course, the silver little call it skid plate at the bottom of the bumper over there to, again, give and emphasize the SUV-like look. Slim LED headlights. And before we even the car let me tell you a feature that i really was impressed by in this market segment was the fact that the headlights are auto and you even have auto high beams that switch on and off when needed and will turn off when approaching traffic and this was something that really impressed me i have to tell you at this level of the market you come round, of course you've got the standard cladding round the wheel arches down the bottom of the doors to tell you this is now suv and very neat on elegant spec 17 inch dual color alloy wheels over there they look good they'd make the package look pretty neat another good feature on the car is although there's a little button over here to lock the doors it does automatically unlock on approach that's something i think that's nice in our security conscious times things like that you do want it does only unlock the driver's door as well by the way so i do appreciate that now, of course, you open the back door. Notice it's quite a long door, which it needs to be because of the seven-seater side of things. And let's have a look in the rear seat. Let me jump in very quickly and point out a few things to you. Well, in, can I call it standard format for the rear seat? I've got decent legroom, more than enough headroom with my hat on. And another feature over here, you'll notice, the aircon has vents up above. And interestingly, there's almost a bar over here. So there are vents there and, in fact, above the front passengers as well, which is something I haven't noticed too often before. No USBs in the rear. Mm, Honda, you want to appeal to families? Think about that one. There is a single 12-volt socket over there for the rear seat. I think maybe... USBs would be useful, I must be honest, but anyway. Now, another feature over here, because I've told you there are another two seats behind, is this bench can slide forward and backwards. So obviously, if you're using those rearmost seats, it probably would be an advantage to bring it forward. Nice and easy, and it does do that in the two-thirds, one-third split. So again, pretty useful pretty neat. We'll look at access to the rearmost seats in a few moments. Let's come around to the back and you'll immediately notice the tail lights split between the C pillar and the rear hatch. Again, neat, no complaints, no problems there. And you have again got the skid plate at the bottom over there. It's a pretty neat looking effect and of course just everything you would expect on a car like this. Now, as you see, I've popped open the rear hatch, which you have to do by manual force. Something that I don't think I'm going to complain about, but anyway. Now, this is something that I found quite surprising because I haven't really seen it before. Note that these rearmost seats don't fold flat into the floor. There's quite a height difference over here. That I found slightly awkward and I loaded a few things into the boot because, of course, they're not going to slide in and be level. Maybe I'm nitpicking, I don't know, but I just want to show you everything possible on the vehicle and just for you to allow it. So now, the Allen test, well, in seven-seater format, you know there's going to be no boot space. So let's not even bother to show you that. But now, if I climb in, well, it's slightly different, and obviously now there isn't the height I would expect because the seat is raised, can I call it? But, mm, in five-seater format, it probably would just make a two-allen boot. Probably just. But I'm going to say the word just. 
What is nice, I must say, I've noticed over here, is there is a 12 volt socket right at the back over here. So for use in the boot or for third row passengers, you do have that. So that's a pretty nice feature, I think, and I'm not going to complain about that. As normal, well, how do I get these rearmost seats? Well, simple tug and there you go. Nice and easy, and of course, they do come up and down individually. Another interesting feature is the fact that the engine in the BRV is common to so many models in, in the Honda range in South Africa. So that's good from a parts point of view, etc. It's a four-cylinder, 1.5-litre, naturally aspirated, putting out 89 kilowatts, 145 newton meters of torque. In this case, driving the front wheels through a CVT automatic transmission. Let's check it out a lot more. My name is Michael Pachut, and I'm the proud owner of Change Cars and the host of the TV show All Things Motoring. But I'm even prouder today to say that I work with Alan Rosenmeyer from Motor Matters, better known as a man with a hat. If you're looking for the best reviews on all new vehicles, Motor Matters. If you're looking for the best deals on new or used cars, changecars.co.za, where every car is sold by a five-star rated manufacturer approved dealer. Okay, so how's the access to those cheap seats, as I always call them? Well, there's a lever on the side of the middle seat over here. You flip it and look at that, boom and boom. And that gives you, oh, plenty, plenty of access to the rearmost seats, I must say. That is pretty impressive. That's a good space to open up. Now, let me sit in the back over here. And the first thing I'll tell you is, Headroom is limited. My hat on, I'm virtually touching the roof. And in fact, on the side over here, it's a bit lower. I do feel a touch claustrophobic over there, I must be honest, with this tiny little window over there as well for the rearmost passengers. Now, the next test, of course, is let's drop the middle seat, making sure my feet are out the way, and pull that and there and I can fit but this is for 12 year olds or less I think I would not be over comfortable in here on a long journey that's for sure sorry Honda but look this is the market segment it is at the budget end of seven seaters I do get it and it's certainly for family use for young families I do get it I've always said with vehicles like this, I like the idea of a five-seater with large boot. But that's me. Right, well, on the road, as I've said, you've got to allow for the fact that this is sort of an elongated box. So, sound effects, there is a little bit of echo and boom and things like that that will come through. And interestingly, this test car has done 18,000 kilometers, which is a lot more than many of the cars I do test drive. I don't think that's a problem. But in the urban jungle, it's smooth, it's comfortable, it's relaxed. Not sure what's going on here. But anyway, but now we're in our usual suburban area and let's see what it's like. And I want you to particularly feel and hear the CVT gearbox because that is really one of the things. So I'm sure you can hear the engine and you should be hearing what I'm saying about the CVT. What I have learned about CVTs is if you adjust your driving style very slightly, it will make life a lot easier. And like some of the AMTs on the market, if you lift your foot off, you encourage that step up to the next gear. So sometimes that's just very useful. But we're on an incline now and you'll hear, I find it just that little bit boomy or droney at times but I'm really being pretty picky and as I feel I think 80% of people who buy cars in this sort of category will not really be bugged or worried by such things but it certainly does pull decently enough uphill even if I get the feeling that I'm maybe revving a bit higher than I'd want we're coming up of course to our usual three-point turn spot although there is a car blocking me slightly so I'm not sure if this is going to work as well as usual but let's have a look and see what we can do 
and nope we very definitely not going to make it today so we chuck it into reverse you've got your camera with your guidelines and not bad i mean really not a big deal and off we go but look the ride is smooth the ride is comfortable because it's a long wheelbase it makes it a nice comfortable ride without being bouncy or anything like that and really for general urban use this car is an absolute breeze and an absolute pleasure it's one of those cars that's just really easy to drive jumping in behind the wheel let's start off as we always do looking at the instrumentation well it's basic but it gives you the information you need and that's what really counts but i want to show you what i think is an exceptional figure for a vehicle of the sort yes 6.5 liters per hundred we've done 380 kilometers on this test a lot of freeway a lot of urban driving so a good mix not really an open road trip either and yet i've got that figure right down to 6.5 now when you consider that this is a seven seater and it has a little engine as i said 1.5 89 kilowatts 145 newton and it's a cvt gearbox i'm impressed shall we simply put it this way now taking a look at the steering wheel You've got, of course, your controls for your sound, for your phone on that side. And over here, now, this is where you know this is the elegance again. Because look here, it's even got active cruise control. Yes, I said active cruise control. And it's got a form, which I didn't use, of some kind of autonomous where you can lane keep, etc., etc., which is really, I think, quite something for a car in this category. And I keep repeating that. You've even got paddles on the steering wheel i often wonder why but it has them so let's take a look at the rest of the car over here and at the interior of the car you've got a screen over here in the center it's i would call it an average screen it's not exceptional but you know what it does the job and there you go your reverse camera again it's not overhead it's not 360 it's none of those things but it's there it works and isn't that what counts and it really does do the job for you and I'm pretty happy with the way it functions you come down below that and there you see your controls for your auto air conditioning again nice and simple nice and easy works really down below here you've got a 12 volt and two USBs for the front at very least one for connection and I must tell you it did connect very quickly very easily to Android Auto you've got a place here for your phone no inductive charging pad whatever it does actually hold your phone quite nicely over there and works quite nicely with a cable for Android Auto couple of those over there your very traditional standard auto gear shift nothing much to say about it quite honestly your very traditional gear lever over here with a little release button and interestingly it's got a s sport setting over there that i suppose if you want you would then use the paddles for shifting quite honestly i just don't see the purpose on a car like this but that's me let's not say too much more and then you've got a manual old-fashioned handbrake again quite happy with that now being elegance you've got leather trim on the seats throughout you can see very nice counter stitching and you've even got a little bit of the glossy and the leather trim effect over here on the dashboard so it's all very neat looks very good on the base trend model you only get two airbags on comfort and elegance you get six airbags that's again a very big plus as far as i am concerned and it does make a big difference now obviously a car like this is not for rushing around not for racing around it's for urban use well you can go on holiday in it very comfortably and a family can travel i would say four to five seater with nice big boot it really is comfortable it would work very very well as far as i'm concerned cvt gearboxes well you either love them or you hate them but again i've got to say that in this category I don't think it's going to matter that much to your average buyer and I'll put it that way because I think that's what really is the point of it I find it a little bit sometimes where the revs go a little bit higher especially if you're trying to tackle an uphill and it does groan a little bit but I don't think 80% of buyers are even going to notice and the efficiency and convenience of an auto I don't have to tell you that quite honestly 
So, the questions I'm going to ask you are, you need occasional seven seats, you need automatic, you need quite a lot of extra luxury trim that surprised me like those auto high beams, like the active cruise control and a few other things that really surprised me on this car that it's got them at the price. Because as we're in this top of the range model right now, you're talking 480,000 Rand, 470,000 Rand. The range starts with the trend manual at 380. So that's the pricing. And in today's world, that is massively competitive. Comfort and elegance models even include a two year 30,000 kilometer service plan as well. There are a couple of other competitors in this category from Toyota, from Suzuki. We know them. Honda has its reputation. It still has its reputation. And really, if this is the kind of accommodation, kind of space you need, you should put this on your shortlist. You'd be doing yourself a disservice if you don't. For Matters, I'm Alan R. See you next time.